And with me, I have Dr. Kasha Kynes, and we are going to be discussing Epstein Barr. Hello, okay. hello. So yeah, how are you doing today, Dr. Good. Kasha? <laughs> doing great. No sun here so far, but uh -oh. it's a good day. Yeah. Happy All Friday. Right. Well, well, good, good. So let me go ahead and give your bio, and then we'll have you give a brief intro. So Dr. Kasha is the CEO and founder of Global Epstein-Barr Virus Institute. She is a leader in recovery therapy for chronic Epstein-Barr virus, author, wellness expert, and a highly respected doctor of clinical nutrition, a graduate of the prestigious Bastyr University. And since 2005, Dr. Kynes has built an international reputation as a functional nutritionist from being sought after by Johns Hopkins University to her groundbreaking Amazon bestseller book, Epstein-Barr Virus Solution, uh, which I have read. It's been a few years. Oh, yeah. it's uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's right, right behind you. Uh, yes. And uh, yeah, so I read her book uh, a few years ago. It's been out. When, when did, when was it released, your book? 2018. It 2018. Time, okay. time is flying, yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, so yeah, so definitely check out her book. And we'll... I'll talk more about it again at the end. But um, so also, uh, Dr. Kasha has just developed an effective proprietary evidence-based methodology to EBV recovery and successful EBV recovery program for those suffering from EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, and also trains other practitioners in our methodology and clinician EBV training and certification program and an EBV practitioner workshop. And so we could talk more about this later, especially your recovery program. And so Dr. Kynes is on a mission to bring the truth about Epstein-Barr virus and yes. solution to 1 million people globally. So no one needs to suffer needlessly from this misunderstood virus and its complications. And currently she lives with her husband and their companion animals in Kingston, Washington. Although we're gonna, we were chatting you know, before starting the interview and she said she is going to be moving soon to Wisconsin, correct? Madison area. All right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, again, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kasha. My pleasure. So happy to be here with you. And yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. so I interviewed you about a year and a half, but for those who haven't watched that, it was on YouTube. So for those who haven't watched that, let's go ahead. If you could give just a brief introduction, like your background, how did you start focusing on Epstein-Barr? As the medical literature says, if your patient is on a protocol, has chronic issues with health, and not responding to the protocol as expected, you should check into testing chronic EBV. <laughs> That's basically. So my journey, just to uh, simplify it, is uh, a couple of things. I lost a very good friend to complications of MS, and I was always asking the universe and the higher powers why her what happened why couldn't i help her because it was devastating it was almost 20 years she was fighting it and then uh, so i guess the student is asking the teacher appears there were a lot of circumstances that just came and uh the last one was when a couple of my patients asked me for my educated opinion on a book and you know how it is, like, like if one tells you to read a book and you don't have time, you can brush it off. But a couple of them are like, okay, I have to read it, whether I like it or not, because I didn't have time. So it was medical medium book. I read it on a plane to a conference <laughs> and I almost fell off the chair just because I saw, you know, when you do functional um, medicine or functional nutrition work, in my case, um, if you do your job, you keep attracting more and more complicated cases. And sometimes, you know, you help so many people, but there's one or two and then three and then four that you just can't, you hit the wall. And you probably know that too. You just, you just get so frustrated because the, instead of focusing on everyone you have been helped, you just can't sleep. And you think about those that are struggling and nobody knows why, and we're doing everything right. Right. So, that was my pain because the, the longer I was in clinical practice, the harder the cases were, I was the last hope. And then we did everything right and, and it wasn't happening. And so when I was reading that book on the plane, it struck me that this was my population. These are the people that did not respond. 
And so uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that book, but that's a, a man saying that the spirit of compassion tells him all this information. And, and so the claims in the book were that majority of the chronic conditions that are immunity problems like that, that people have Hashimoto's included, included uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, MS uh, are driven by this one virus. And so here I am, so many years in practice, best trainings that I could get in the country, and I had never heard of it. And it was like, oh my God, if half of this is true, I have to look into this. So basically my journal is from that point, I just jumped into medical literature and I just never stopped. Then the rest is history because uh, what I discovered just blew me away that there, there's so much evidence, so much medical literature, it's right there. And I was able to pinpoint protocols, create them, you know. And then I watched in my practice, I watched people coming back to life sustainably, long term, you know, magic was happening. So that's why everybody was telling me I had to write the book. And then I was saying, what book? I've never written a book. I don't have time. I don't have life. What are you talking about? Including my husband. <laughs> so I sat down and read and wrote the book. And um, I think I'm just a messenger. I think, uh, you know, when when the time comes, you're called to do a job. If you don't say yes, somebody else will be asked. And I thought, you know, I, I think I need to do that. I think to I think I need to bridge the gap between the medical medium claims and where the medical community is because there's no connection and there's this vast ocean in between. So that's why I was really methodical with medical literature because I wanted to make sure that that's the foundation. And then you, we can add spirituality, we can add stress, we can add emotions, we can add all kinds of things. But, you know, I, I started from there. So that's kind of the story. <laughs> yeah, one of the, before you mentioned medical medium, I was going to actually ask you one of my questions I was going to ask is if someone was choosing between your book and Anthony William, the medical mediums book, what would what you say is the difference, but you kind of elaborated. So yours is more, even though it's great that he brought awareness to Epstein-Barr virus there, they are two completely different books and yours is more yeah. scientific based. Is that one way you would say that is different from, from his? I, I, I would say that. And another thing is, you know, I have most of his books and I love, you know, the recipes, the food, the wisdom. Uh, he doesn't have nutritional background, so some of the recommendations he makes for detox and this and smoothie, people take it to the extreme without being educated about balancing things, and sometimes they lose too much weight. Sometimes they're, you know, they're spiraling in the wrong directions, and I, as a clinical nutritionist, I have to catch them in that process and reverse engineer and educate them on actually balancing meals or balancing adrenals you know what does that mean in the context of the day and meals so that is very important and of course he, he doesn't provide that because that's not his background mm -hmm. so i think that's the missing part and um you know every supplement that i i recommend is a multi performer verified in research there are some that look very good in research, but they don't perform that well. We drop them. We don't use them. They're not fine. Theoretically, in some studies, look good, but it doesn't perform in the community. We don't need that. So it's like, you know, it's verifying things, being very strategic, but also having that clinical nutrition background. So people are very balanced, whether they have a virus or not, you know, it's like they're very balanced. That would be the difference. So, you know, it's a good combo because he opened the door and he made people realize that, wow, what I eat really matters. And there's and there's spirituality to food. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's that component. So that is all beautiful. I think, yeah. I think when you write a book for masses, you make blank statements that are black and white, like everybody has EBV. Everybody will be helped with uh, celery juice. Everybody, you know... Like with celery juice, some people hate it, some people love it, some people have said it's like a miracle, some people don't do well on it. You know, it's just, it's the mix. That's how we are. Everybody's different. So I think he's, his job on this planet was to, to get our attention. And honestly, without that book, how would I know? I actually emailed him and I, I thanked him because that's how I started. Yeah, so I think yeah. we complement each other. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, I think it's safe to say in most cases that 
you know, he talks again a lot about celery juice. I know he has a book dedicated to celery juice and look on a celery juice. I know. Yeah, I know. But I think obviously he talks about other things diet wise and just with anybody, we, we know how the importance of food and, you know, eating healthy. And I'm guessing that most people are drinking the celery juice has, have also made other changes to their diet. So it's hard to pinpoint it to the celery juice because most people aren't probably aren't drinking the celery juice yet going to McDonald's or, you know, another fast food restaurant. They're probably right. cleaning up their, hopefully they're cleaning up their diet. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but you would think right. that they're making other changes because obviously he does, he doesn't just recommend celery juice, but you know, recommends other things. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all good. I mean, it's all good. And and I know that certain things that he claims, they may not be researched fully on that yet. I've seen a little bit of research on celery, constituent and celery juice. So, you know, we may catch up later with him and that's fine too. Um, I agree with you. And, and some people in our community, they're doing our program and they're still juicing celery just because they feel it supports them. They're happy about it. They're committed. And that's perfectly great, you know? No. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Well, so one thing you said earlier, and I don't know if you remember what you like the supplement, you mentioned supplements, there are certain supplements that you've tested out, and they don't work. So do you remember which ones those were if there were a, yeah. a few yeah. of those you mentioned, so people aren't taking those <laughs> supplements, and who knows, maybe yeah. at, at times I'm recommending those supplements, so I could stop recommending yeah. those well, supplements. Well, um, proteolytic enzymes are one of them. They looked great in some studies, but uh, you would have to pop 25, 30 capsules a day. And we have other tools. It's not, it's not that, you know, it's just, and it's not going to work for everyone. So that didn't deliver. And then and there's literally, there's one or two companies that provide this, uh, this product. And then um, in my opinion, loracidin or monolaurin are just not worth it. There's, there's a lot of problems with them, and uh, they're just not worth it. They create a lot of havoc in the body, and they do not provide the multitasking support that, that other things in our protocol do, like selenium. They don't provide antioxidant support. They don't provide nutrients that are missing in diet. They just kill. And so our protocol doesn't tend to kill. It turns off the virus and mobilizes it, which is much safer. When you actually actively kill any pathogen, like you know, you're creating a havoc. So people have to detoxify it. And sometimes the dead DNA is as detrimental as when the pathogen was alive. And so that is really not worth it. So that's why people have die off effect. That's why people have headaches or have malaise. And really, that's not a healing process or oh, healing crisis. It's a crisis. You don't need to do that. <laughs> And for some people that doesn't work, for some people they just have that die off effect. And uh, I just don't think it's worth the money. We only mm -hmm. recommend it if you have co-infections because it's effective for H. pylori, it's effective for uh, fungal infections. You know, So that's, if you have combinations, I might consider it, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Okay. So these are the two big ones. Oh, cat's claw, um, I had one, uh, did I have one case when a woman told me that, that that would that's what turned her around? But maybe I'm mistaken with uh, lemon bulb. I think it was lemon bulb. Cat's claw is pretty hard on the liver, and you know, it's it's a pretty heavy duty herb. And again, uh, it doesn't provide antioxidant or nutrient value that things like selenium, NAC, or lysine provide. I mean, lysine will build your collagen, you know. Um, things yeah. that uh, botanicals don't really do that well. They have some qualities, but it's just it's just comp comparing, you know, them. I stay away from botanicals. We use them as teas because you have to drink. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a win-win. It's inexpensive, available, and you can pick the tea according to the the bonus effects like maybe you need iron or maybe you need vitamin c there's different antiviral teas that can provide particular additional benefits that's how we deal with it the only herb that i use in the primary protocol is licorice that's worth it 
Okay. Licorice root. That's, so uh, yeah. Yeah, I know that's, that does have antiviral properties and. Oh yes. That's a, like, that's a big hitter. That's a, that's a worse, but other than that, so the, this, these are the things that I thought I, you know, I figured that the, you you are, you want to be really strategic because people are so sick and brain fogged you know every time they open their mouth we just want to cut corners and go fast and strategize those mm -hmm. supplements you can take a lot of supplements and not be successful with ebv for years yeah and i think it's important to mention with, with licorice root that if someone has high blood pressure they probably don't want to take it because it could potentially increase blood pressure so just uh, be cautious with uh, with licorice root. Just whenever taking, in my opinion, any any type of herb, it might be a good idea to be working with a functional medicine practitioner. Yeah. I know m most people don't, and you know I, they they'll just take the supplement. And, and certain ones like nutrients, as long as you're not taking too high of a dose, uh, many times are safe. I know selenium. Speaking of safe doses, you usually recommend a higher amount of selenium compared to most people. Most practitioners, 200 micrograms, you give, you usually recommend 600 to 800 micrograms. 800. So we have, you know, in the book, I walk people through counterindications. You know, it, if you are a bigger built person, 800. If you're tiny, tiny, petite, maybe 600. But also, you know, making sure that there's no selenium in any other supplement because you can overdo it. And so if you start losing hair, for example, having some symptoms, you may be overdoing it. You know, sometimes people overdo some of these supplements and they have to pay attention to the doses or they think it's 500 milligrams per capsule, but it's 900 milligrams per capsules. And then they really go over, yeah. and start spiraling with some new symptoms. So yeah, always pay attention to your dosages, cross-reference, uh, if I would say if people don't have a functional doctor, I would check with a pharmacist because pharmacists have quite a lot of knowledge that can check into things and provide any counterindications if a person is not not sure, you know. Yeah, that's not, a good Not point. a medical doctor. Medical doctor is not, not trained in nutraceuticals. Yeah. All right. Thanks for sharing that. And <laughs> of course, all the... All the minerals and vitamins, fatty acids are important, but yes. are there some that you, besides, so selenium, it sounds like you focus on, like that's one of the primary nutrients. If you have to choose a few others, like, you know, whether it's magnesium or again, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, again, everything's important. You want to be, don't want to be deficient in anything, but are there ones that you focus on more than others with, um, in addition to selenium? So you mean specifically about EBV or in terms of what people are deficient in? Yeah, what, what EBV? EBV? I know there's research with like vitamin D, uh, what yeah, everything, so, not just, not just so yeah, EBV. Vitamin D, vitamin D is a given, so it's not even part of my initial protocol because I assume it's already in there. If it's not yet, yeah, it should be definitely vitamin D. Um, D3K2. Um, licorice, as I mentioned. Um, NAC was very important. Lysine is very important. Zinc is very important. Uh, vitamin C, vitamin E. So that would be the initial, and vitamin D. So that would be the initial, we have this uh, initial protocol. That's just those seven and vitamin D. And that actually can start sh shifting and moving the needle if you have potencies that are high enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, And then, you know, but that's, you know, you can't patch holes in your life with just uh, a bunch of supplements. It's a bigger picture. So you have to address uh, where the bucket is leaking. And, you know, eventually you're going to replace the bucket with a new bucket. You know, there is a hole, you know, there is a, your Wi-Fi is blasting on you, which is not good when you have EBV. And there's your mold blasting at you, which is not good when you have EBV. Uh, you have, you know, poor diet and you, you go to fast food restaurants because you're in a bind that can react to the ADBV. So you have those holes in the buckets and these supplements are amazing. But if you really want to get out of that, that EBV reactivation or continual reactivation, you have to build, you know, build a new house with brick, so to speak. So you are invincible. And one, once you get to that point, EBV is not a problem. And if it starts reactivating, you will know exactly why. You will know when to anticipate it because of your circumstances. And you will know exactly what to do. And within 24, 48 hours, you're just going to turn it off. That's exactly what I did in fall. Actually, 
I reactivated here in this house when we moved. Wow. And so I was able to pinpoint and you know, I tested before, after, um, I developed vertigo out of the blue. So I, I turned it off within 24, 48 hours because I knew why, <laughs> you yeah. know, it was a new house. We have a smart meter. I'm waiting for it to be removed, but it's still there. I position, you know, we're unpacking and positioning my desk in the wrong place with all the technology, even though I have Faraday boxes. And then I start going down the stairs and going, ooh. So, yeah, so I jumped on the protocol and uh, moved the desk. See, so yeah. you kind of get, become literate in, oh, what happens with that virus and and we have mold so that's another reason uh you know mold is really unkind and will reactivate ebv so that's m more of a priority before you tackle ebv is to get rid of that mold yeah that's a good point you got to address really any source that's dragging down the immune system dragging the, the yes. immune system so it's yeah. You know, I look at it more as an immune system problem than a virus problem because like, you know, we can't get rid of the, the virus itself. You could just, you know, just improve other areas, you know, try to stop the replication of the virus. Yeah. But yeah. So, so again, the mold and you're, that's, that's a big reason you're moving to, to Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've had four consecutive homes with mold and much of it was missed by, uh, you know, mold inspectors and, or started after mold inspector. People don't take care of the homes. The building yeah. practices are, you know, cutting corners and all that. It's just uh, pretty sad. And we have a lot of rain here in Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also think that another another thing about this virus is such a teacher. If you are a good caretaker of your body and spirit and soul, you are in alignment with who you are. You love what you do. You are of service. You help others. It's like a symphony and beautiful colors around you. You know, it's just you're living your life the way we came here to live. Most people are not in sync with that. And, you know, what is it? 82% of people uh, in the States hate their job. Uh, I don't know the stats, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's that high. Yeah, I mean, I had a job I was not supposed to do for five months and i was ready for therapy i had to walk away because it was that's killing my spirit i was physically so uncomfortable and you know i was an assistant in a local government in Dansk. it wasn't for me so but people live this way and so i think there's a physical level absolutely but there's also this uh more spiritual emotional level there's hurts there's pain uh, uh, emotional pain from losses or being betrayed or you know not being heard all this uh, and all this hits women harder and so i find that majority of people with chronic ebv that are really taxed and really sick are women we're i've seen more men now actually too but we have a um we have we have a joke in our community that this is welcome to the um international overgiver overachiever type a personality anonymous club <laughs> these are givers these are healers these are you know people with a heart on the sleeve and so you are so vulnerable to a lot and you overgive and you lose your boundaries and you know you don't listen to your voice and you maybe people take advantage of you and so it's you know, a stacking effect the virus is it's easy for a virus to reactivate because in a circumstance like that you may not sleep enough you may overwork you may not be able to say no to your boss about friday night work you know it's like so even building that personal personal muscle helps so i think the virus in that sense is a big teacher yeah because once you are congruent with who you are and you are aligned you turned it off it's just there in the background and that's it you know we all have it so that is true well yeah mo uh, yeah a small percentage but what like 90 95 percent so it's uh mm -hmm. so yeah one so i wanted to switch gears and talk about blood testing and mm -hmm. i'm imagining that 
I, I guess most people who see you probably have already done the blood test for Epstein Barr, yeah. either on their own or maybe another practitioner. The uh, notorious test. What was that? The notorious test. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. So yeah, I don't know how much you rely on the the blood test, but either way, you could talk about you know your experience whether you 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 want to see all the tests. The, the there's four different markers, but either way, I'd like like for you to talk about the different markers and which ones you feel are more significant. I mean, I, we did discuss this during the last uh, interview, so so I kind of know already. Enough, but... Yeah, it's never enough. I think I've 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 talked about it millions of times, and it's never never gets old, right? Um, pretty much everybody asks me about the labs. People email me, you know, in social media, people text me with screenshots. It's like, oh, so we have an entire page on our website about that so people can interpret those labs. And even, even we even have a link to a 50 minutes Facebook Live when I had the whiteboard and color markers and we discussed this because, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the beginning of the journey for people and uh, you can be trapped in the wrong interpretation for years and continue deteriorating i see that and it's not not necessarily because of a lab being misinterpreted or a wrong lab so there's four markers that are available by labs and if a medical doctor you know if you ask a medical doctor they will order the lab if you don't tell them anything uh the lab will only include two or three typically not four so you have to make sure that you alert the doctor that that happens and that they add the number four and that it's the most important one that is not part of the panel typically. And so we're going to talk about that. And so that's the first step. And people don't realize that people spend one, two years going from doctor to doctor asking to be tested. Medical doctors are resistant because they know there's no cure in their opinion. And if you had mono, that's it, you're done. You won't have EBV anymore. So their belief system is, I'm not going to test you because it's irrelevant. And even if you had it, there's nothing we can do. Plus, they misinterpret it. So most of the time, the, the interpretation is negative for EBV, and that's probably inaccurate. So you ask me if I recommend testing all the time. Not that much. Um, I think the most important thing is the context, whether people have tried different therapies and they failed, because that's typical for EBV, and whether they have a history where they had all kinds of different presentations over their lifetime, you know, idiopathic juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and then, you know, maybe mono at the university, and then maybe depressions, strength depressions induced by stress and then they would spiral and you know and then you know maybe they have Hashimoto's or then maybe they have lupus you know it's just like you look through the story and you find out that there's something that is causing all this the body is not just creating havoc because it has nothing to, else to do <laughs> there's always a reason so so I always ask people to just pay attention to the context and then you can do testing again and again if you know when to test. So I would say test first when you feel the, the best. And then test just during the first week when you feel like you've been hit, hit by a truck. Because that's the typical expression. I feel like I've, been ju I've just been hit by a truck. It's the worst of the worst. So you don't want to wait. You, it's hard to test when you feel so, so miserable. But that's where you want to test to see if the markers are showing that this is EBV, because if you wait a couple of weeks, you're gonna miss one of the markers. So that's the pitfall, you know, depending where you test, you can miss the whole logic of where the EBV is in your context. So that's kind of the background, does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So is that the, the one that most the doctors miss uh, or even just panels don't have is that early antigen. So is that the one that if you test when you're not feeling bad, that that might yeah. come back negative. But then if you are feeling bad, then it pr is more likely to come back positive. Come back positive when yes, yes. And the, there are certain irregularities in people, you know, if you look at statistics and studies, there's also a case when a person can have everything negative 
And then uh, the question is, you know, if the lifestyle and history and medical history and, and complications and symptoms are very consistent with ABV, then the question is, are they even producing the antibodies at this time? So in that case, you know, I feel like a medical doctor has a responsibility to test uh, total IgG, total IgM, total IgE to see if those immunoglobulins are even produced, because sometimes that's the reason why things are normal, you know? And then you can recalculate, there's a trick, you can recalculate uh, if actually they're producing, what would it be? Uh, so it's like, you know, a different story. But um, so early antigen. So another thing is that there are three that are IgG in the test and one that is IgM. And so the typical problem where medical doctors, because they don't know, they don't read, they assume that IgM is current infection and the three IgG is past infections and that's it. And that's where the first error is. That's not how it works. So the IgM is VCA. So VCA IgM, it looks like it should be current infection, but statistically from the studies and from empirically from all these hundreds and hundreds of people and tests, uh, presentations, I can tell you that it's, it only reactivates, it's, it's positive when it's the first infection that will probably be elevated. And oftentimes when you reactivate, the early antigen will show, but the VCA IgM will not show. It will be normal. So in a chronically infected person, we expect it to be normal. And that's where the confusion is. Sometimes it's elevated constantly with every time you test. This is very rare, but it happens. And you know- I have, I have, I have one, one patient who no matter what, what I've done and she she's, seen another practitioner got ozone treatment and you know just it, the igm keeps on coming back positive which is rare most most i'd say 99 percent of the time it's negative and then yeah. i'd say the the other the vca igg and then the nuclear antigen are commonly yeah. positive and yeah, yeah. so it could be molecular uh, mimicry it could be co-infections it could be other things like tripwire that's that's where it could be but it's rare yeah i it's rare what i would say is uh yeah keep testing those two tests you know see what other infections you have and and don't live by your lab live by your symptoms and your quality of life you know are you improving mm -hmm. that's important so that's the one igm so vca igm vca igg and ebna igg those two that you mentioned these are the big mamas um uh like they they will be elevated for the life of the host so typically what we don't expect is to bring them to zero to normal but let's say if it's triple digits then we have a problem because triple digits when you say normal ranges from zero to 19 let's say and if you have 235 it's a triple digit it's multiple times of what it should be. So you know that it's affecting your health, that, that this virus has implications in your life. So uh, it's even worse if your levels of either of them says more than the current range, more than 600, one more than 750. It could be 2,000. The lab doesn't give you the number. It's just above it. Uh, and so as you get better, the numbers may be dropping for both of them but they're still above that range. Yeah. So maybe it was 2000 and now is 800. So if you have those still beyond the range, but you are feeling that you're recovering, I don't want any of the listening uh, audience here to get depressed and say it doesn't work because you may be dropping and dropping and dropping. And at one point you may drop into the range. So you'll have a number, maybe it will be 480. You know, so you want to you want to anticipate and not get depressed because people get really depressed about that. Mm -hmm. um, so these two will be elevated, but they will. If you repeatedly test, you'll notice that when you reactivate your early antigen, those two will also kind of go a little higher. And when you feel better and you don't have early antigen elevated and you feel, you know, symptoms are better, you're improving. They will start subsiding a little bit. So they they come and go, come and go, somewhere there. 
And then the last one is uh, early antigen EA, the uh, IG, uh, IgG. And that's the one that pops in during like two, three weeks when you reactivate. So you want to catch it when you really feel the worst. Um, and so it doesn't live long because the virus goes in and out. Like I said, you know, my reactivated because of the co combination of Wi-Fi in that corner, Wi-Fi, the mold, and stress. <laughs> so, you know, we've had to move because of the mold. We moved into a place with mold. Uh, and we had mold inspection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that, that happens so, a lot unfortunately yeah that happens a lot unfortunately so <clears throat> so that's kind of the trajectory so you want to have a context and you live in your body so you know how you feel and you know where you've been and so kind of paying attention to that gives you um empowerment knowledge independence and you can do those labs 150 to 100 dollars you get that lab once in a while independently you get the report go to our website read the you know or read the book there's a whole chapter on lab interpretation uh and so you know you to go you kind of understand where you are that's all that's all you need you don't have yep. to knock on the door and beg the doctor and then be frustrated that you just you know waited two months to see the doctor paid all this money they missed the marker and then they tell you there's nothing they can do. Like, I don't want people to waste their their energies because they don't have mm -hmm. those. Energies. They're they're sick. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, oh. we have the system. It's all in there. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I'll say it again. Check out our book. Not only for the testing, but it does give a lot of information about the treatments. It does talk about supplements and foods. So that's mm -hmm. why we're not going to get into great detail with that here, just because everything's in the book. <laughs> so, uh, almost 600 pages. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, definitely, yeah, really, but actually that's, yeah, bigger than one of my books. Uh, one, of, one of mine is over 500 pages, so. I beat uh, you, I beat you to it. Yeah, so <laughs> final question I wanna ask you is the relationship between Epstein-Barr virus and thyroid health. You know, whether it's just not autoimmune, but I know especially autoimmune, Graves disease, Hashimoto's, there, there is some evidence in the literature showing a connection with both Graves and Hashimoto's. Yeah. So do you see that too, where sometimes yeah. it seems like Epstein-Barr is either, you know, a trigger or at least a contributing factor? Yeah, both, all of the above. Yeah, could be Graves. You know, mo most women have, like we're leaning towards hypothyroidism, which is uh, Hashimoto's, autoimmune, uh, not so many graves, right? But it go, it can go with the virus, can go either way. We also have tumors, specific tumors of thyroid, and I've seen that. I've seen the tumors removed, and I've seen, you know, radiation of the thyroid, and women are still miserable, and uh, this is not addressed. Uh, so, yeah, the thyroid is such an issue. Um, uh, EBV is one of the driving forces uh, triggering uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and Graves too, but Hashimoto's uh, absolutely. So sometimes if we just focus on uh, the EBV protocol, uh, we can normalize the antibodies, normalize thyroid, normalize symptoms, and, and that sustains. And, you know, and the women then know what to do if it reactivates. If it starts going down, they immediately jump on the protocol again aggressively. And like I said, in my case, you know, one, two days and you're good. So you have, you don't have to be sick. You don't have to be miserable. So it is a possibility. You know, there's other factors like gluten, Yersinia, H. pylori. Uh, there's other infective agents. Um, and I would say maybe also environmental toxins. So that would be, you know, that would be the triggers, I would say. Wouldn't you agree? Anything I missed for Hashimoto's? Um, I mean, there's a lot. Actually, one of the books I wrote is Hashimoto's Triggers. <laughs> so ah, so awesome. it gets pretty comp comprehensive. And I do talk about viruses, including Epstein-Barr and that. Mm -hmm. But there's, uh, I'm not anti-iodine, but iodine can be a trigger. And yeah, gut infections in the literature you know, the H. pylori, and there's a case study on blastocystis hominis, which is a parasite, and 
you know, of course, yeah, the foods, gluten, you know, dairy oh, yeah. potentially. So yeah, there's, there's a, yeah. And there's more than that. So yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. So, so to focus on Hashimoto's triggers, I guess you could check out my book and yeah, to, to focus on Epstein-Barr, you know, definitely get <laughs> Asher's book. Yeah. And yeah. So where can people learn more about you, Dr. Dr. Kasha? So we have a whole website. It's either my name, kashakinds.com, which is just, you know, it's a bigger, huge, huge website. We've had it forever with all kinds of resources. But the EBV specific, we created a website a few years ago called EBV Help. So EBV, H-E-L-P.com. So that's where you have all the medical conditions linked to PubMed. You have symptoms. You have lab interpretation. You have consumer direct labs if people need it where they live. You know, we have programs. So yeah, we're trying. We're trying. We have a masterclass series now. Um, as we speak, we're going to talk about molds and EVV next week. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> uh, we have EVV transformational workshops, sometimes EVV challenge. You know, just you know, we're we're trying to create space for everyone on the journey and be of service. And we have a complete EBV recovery program for consumers. So if, if, if people are sick and they're ready, we got it. Mm. Can you talk a, a little bit about that? Just because, of course, again, they could get a lot of information from the book. And some people, I'm sure, you know, get the book and just mm -hmm. receive amazing results just from the book alone. Mm -hmm. But so why would someone want to join the, the program? I mean, I know this, too, because I have a couple of books, but still people want some yeah. people do need the one on one support. Yeah, well, the, the way we design it, we run it many times, uh, and it seems to be working, is that we have we, the one thing that people uh, struggling with the BV really appreciate is the first thing we do, a transformational workshop, is that there is a community of people just like them. They are so isolated and lonely, and they don't talk to anybody who goes through their experience. So we have breakout rooms in Zoom, many times during that particular workshop to just to get people connected and it's like aha moment so so our students in the recovery program they have a the big uh facebook community uh we also have monthly q a calls when i come live and we just sometimes it's two hours sometimes two and a half hours we just talk and talk and talk and i answer questions so we have a vast library of those we used to do it every week <laughs> We have tons. So if people are very sick, they can just listen to the audio and listen, listen, and, and kind of get a sense of the virus. So and that gives people so much empowerment because it's just a virus. We can zap it. We can turn it around. It's okay, you know. It's a. It's not the, this big monster that people are so afraid of. Um, so we have, you know, it's a self-paced online program with tons of support and materials. There's some videos. There's a lot of reading, and there's to do action steps. Uh, we're going through different areas of life, including spirituality and joy, including supplements, including kitchen with tons of different resources and a lot of practicality because this has to be practical. And, and so, you know, we have an initial protocol for supplements right on, right from the start. So people within the first three weeks can start feeling better so that they have better focus and less fatigue so they can actually continue you know uh implementing other things and then we we added a health coach specializing in in my methodology so we we're building a team so they're supported uh we're creating co-ops so there's small groups focusing on particular area in the program with a coach um and um and they have an opportunity to uh, schedule one-on-one -on -one with me just for our students. I have a special discount, like really robust discount. And so they can schedule with me and we can, we can, they can do it as often that as they need. So we can go in, you know, some people have SIBO, some people have co-infections. So I can guide them. Uh, my one-on-one -on -one practice is closed, but I am a consultant now. So I can guide them. I can review labs. I can, you know, tell them, you know, we have, we have protocols. We have, so much support for SIBO. We have protocol, a full protocol for H. pylori that was very successful in my clinical practice, and so they have that. All kinds of, you know, there's a there's a module on mold, and we talk a lot about that. There's a module on Wi-Fi. There's uh, co-infections, hydrochloric acid, 
uh, other labs that they should test. It's just a lot of traveling with ABV, antibiotics, what to do, vagus nerve, uh, and uh, lymph, lymphatic system, what to do with it, what exercises are okay or not. And we keep adding. So it's like uh, you have access to it as many years as you need. We don't restrict it. So you have basically access to me as long as you need every month. <laughs> so, awesome. so, yeah, we have a great community, beautiful, beautiful people, you know. And you also, you also offer a free discovery call for anyone who, because it sounds like there's a lot of options, you know, not just the pro that program that you mentioned, but um, some other options. So, mm -hmm that is that is something you offer i believe right yes yeah, so on both websites you can you can schedule clarity session with uh, rachel uh, our um, operational manager who who has had you know she came to me from that community um or with me uh, we had to put a price tag because free uh we had no shows so we we do have to hold you know hold the the place with a fee <laughs> But the it's it's up to thirty minutes and there's homework, so the person has a, an opportunity to write everything, you know, all the diagnosis they have, everything they've done, what worked, what didn't, what they need, where they are, their dreams, their pain, they, everything. And you know, I I just review it, I reframe it, I put it in my notes, so I spend some time on it. So when we talk, I I understand where this person is and I can guide them. What is the next step for you? What do you need? Where where you can go and then you, they can ask any questions um so so that's uh, i really enjoy that because i get to know people and direct them and and possibly invite them to our program because that's really the best you know it's a solution it's just we have it there yep. yeah and i forgot to mention earlier that for anyone that joins the program i got a special code where you could get 10 percent off and you know if you're if you visit the website and you're ready to, to to do that, of course, do that. But of course, they could read the book first if they if they want, which again is mm -hmm. a free book. Or again, they could do the discovery call. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Pleasure. Yeah, it's gr great chatting with you, and you know, I'm sure the you know sh sure the audience learned a lot. And uh, again, this is the second time we interviewed. I'm sure there'll be a third time in the future. Yes, anytime. Sign me up. I'll be there. We'll have maybe more questions. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to questions. Uh, just to let everyone know, um, I can't. You know, I, I gotta probably. I probably have like ten minutes just because my daughter fractured her ankle and I have to pick her up from the. She's on crutches. So I have to pick oh, her up. No. From the top. Yeah, she get, usually gets. To the bus stop around 305 or something. So so if I don't get to if we don't get to all questions, I apologize. Um but uh so let's try to get through as many questions as we can. Uh can the so Gabriella asks, can the Epstein um Epstein bar be trapped in thyroid nodules? If so, how can can we solve it? I think that's one of the indications if you have nodules already that the body is trying to to uh you know, tackle the virus. And uh, I don't know if it's true because I haven't seen the study, but the, according to medical medium, it encapsulates the virus um, creating those nodules, but that's not effective. So I don't know, but uh, I, I see the correlation in women that that's kind of an indication of where it's going. So basically, if, if to reverse it, you know, you just want to learn about the virus and see if the protocol works, and then that will be you know black and white you'll know if it's driven by abv or not mm -hmm. all right well thanks for that response and then okay diane what is the name of dr kosh up oh. hmm yeah i'm not sure what diane is at, uh so yeah that's yeah so my website is kashakines.com exactly as it is kashakines.com easy website so you can uh, find clarity session there and there should be a link to the other website but the website is probably the question www.ebvhelp.com ebvehelp.com 
All right. So Karen's question is, my daughter has had Epstein-Barr virus for 20 years. She now has a nodule and cyst in her throat. Is it Epstein-Barr virus related? And and what can we do? Yeah, it 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 it's a uh, it's most likely <laughs> part of the presentation. So I would say, you know, the first thing you can do, if you want to just go to my EBV website, uh, either get the book or go to media. I have a lot of uh, interviews as well talking about EBV. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, but after today, you probably are just enough. You have enough uh, information to just get into the book or schedule a clarity session. If you have a lot of questions about your daughter, we can iron it out too. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we have from someone in the Facebook group who's saying, read the entire book. A lot of good inf information. I love the red borscht soup recipe. Uh, well, I, I recently made that soup in honor of the Ukrainian people because it's a Ukrainian recipe. You know, Poland and Ukraine are very close, and I'm Poland, Polish. So, oh, thank you for that. That's sweet. Yes, good for your liver. Yeah. All right. And then, Debbie, thank you for all you do, Doc Eric. Your website helped me treat my Graves disease eight years ago. <gasps> oh, yay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you awesome. so much for sharing. Oh my gosh, Dr. Eric, great job. Debbie, congratulations. That's amazing. This is what why we do what we do. We want those stories. Um, and yeah, I never heard of that. Michael says, this type of frequency I'm using dissolve my thyroid nodules in a week. Uh, Very interesting. I will, I will say this though, um, and may, maybe it did help, but I would say like, for example, there's also for nodules like radio frequency ablation and the problem with that, I mean, it's it, it's pricey, but it's not addressing the cause also of the novel. Right. So, you know, you, you probably would have to keep on using it. And same Correct. thing if someone gets radioactive. Uh, and again, sometimes the radio frequency ablation, it's better than getting thyroid surgery, in my opinion, or, you know, getting, you know, in like the case of toxic multinodule goiter, like radioactive iodine, or again, they might also a lot of times do the surgery. But again, you always you always want to try to address the cause of the problem, even though sometimes an intervention is necessary. Yeah, because uh, we we want to see how sustainable it is. Does it reactivate and come back in a year, half a year, two years? That's the yeah, that's the bottom line. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay, and she was asking of the book, so um, Dr. Kasha's book, the Epstein Barr Virus Solution, right? The Epstein Barr virus solution. Yes. Yep. If you if you get it if you get the link to this book from our website, there is a page for that on ebvhelp.com. Uh, we will give you two two really meaty and juicy and yummy resources free as a thank you. You just have to put the receipts from the Amazon sale. Um, one is a really big. I mean, it took me a long to get the resources and studies on microwaving, uh, what, why, uh, why not, what to do, you know, just simple things, it's huge. And the other one is a little glimpse of me in a, in a food store showing you gluten-free products, what to watch for when you don't want those gluten-free or what to pick to actually uh, get the best deal on them. So it's practical and uh, relevant. So hopefully, you go that route, not not instantly to uh, to Amazon, so we can support you this way. Yeah, yeah, you might as well because either way, you're getting it on Amazon, right? Right? They purchase yeah, it. On yeah, Amazon. yeah, they yeah. Just, they, just send, they send the receipt, so you really, yeah, you just yeah. want to make sure to take it in there. Of that. Come back there, so we can serve you. Yeah, we can provide that free resource for you. All right. Um, are there any other questions? I know I said I have to leave a little bit early, um, but still have like five minutes you know stay until three if there are if there's no more questions that's fine but just want to make sure i didn't scare people away from answering questions saying i have to have to leave i just sometimes when when i do these calls they you know like we get you know like 20 20 20 25 minutes worth of questions um but that's not always the case so maybe that's it just depends on the day mm -hmm. yeah so all right let's do last call for questions and oh, okay here we go there's a love question there you go yeah 
So Kita says, I took an EBV test recently. My VCA IgM was negative. VCA IgG greater than 600. Nuclear ant antigen greater than 600, which I, yeah, I commonly see. This pattern is very common. It, it looks like they didn't do the early antigen. But her question is, is, is this bad? Also, I have Graves, hyperthyroidism, and nodules. What should be... Um, my ne what should my next step be? So it, it sounds like from what, what you said during the actual episode that this would be bad. You said triple digits, and this obviously is out of range. You know, it could be, like you said, you gave the example, it could be like 2000, you know, it could be, yeah. it could be 601. <laughs> and so, so, yeah. Yeah. So you want to expand on this? And yeah. So I would say that's very consistent with chronic EBV. We don't know your status as of today. <clears throat> because early antigen is missing. But in a case like that, early antigen will be up and down, up and down. So sometimes it will be normal, depending on how you're feeling. And so, you know, if you want to, if you just tested it, I would just request early antigen by itself. So you have that and you have a complete picture. And then depending if, if this is how you feel normally, then I want you to test again when you feel much worse and then when you feel the best. So you have a baseline and you remember, write it down on your test. This is what I felt the best. This is what I felt the worst. So you kind of have a, a baseline of where where your body is within the uh, these labs. Uh, but because you have those chron the chronic condition, you have the nodules, you have autoimmunity, uh, I would be hard pressed to say, no, it's not EBV. It's consistent with chronic active EBV. So it's possible that if you address it right head on, you actually might might feel so much better. Um, like I, I invite you to for a challenge to do that and see and let us know. It would be so awesome. All uh, right, thanks for that yeah. response. Um, also for not, ref Kida. yeah, we. Oh, what, what did you say? It was a great question. From oh Kida. yeah, exactly. Like you say, a lot of people have exactly the same presentation, yep. and that IgM is normal. That's just. In chronic chronic EBV, that typically is normal. Yeah, and also I wanted to say we've already had a few questions with nodules. I also have uh, an actually a few articles on my website, naturalendocrinesolutions.com, and you can just search for nodules as well. But um, yeah, and again, just uh, Dr. Kasha's book, as she said, she has a whole chapter with the labs, and of course, the whole book is focused on helping with with Epstein Barr. Yeah. So the the labs are great. You know, I mean, the the chapter on labs great, but I think that that definitely wasn't my favorite one. The last few chapters when it talks about, you know, like the the supplements and the foods. So, yeah. okay, this is gonna be the last question. So Gabriella asks, I know it sounds silly, but does the feeling of having something crawling on the nose and not having nothing at all, having lots of phlegm in the morning, could it be Epstein Barr virus st station in our sinus area, the, the nose, the throat? Oh, I've never heard, Gabriela, I've never heard the one crawling on your nose. Uh, is that like neurological sim symptom, like, uh, you know, tingling? I don't know. But the throat is, the entry of the virus is typically through the throat, through the through the nose, but through the throat. So larynx, uh, tonsils, your throat, salivary glands can be impacted. So this is where it starts. Because it's a kissing, uh, kissing disease, as they say, right? So yeah, and this was a uh, response. Yes, you could say yes as far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, neurological function can be affected by by the virus, and so support for neurological, new neu neurologically needed uh, nutrients are important, and so sometimes people can't move. They throw their neck, the throat, the lymph nodes are all involved. This is where the virus likes to dump its toxins. So when you start to do the protocol, suddenly the pain goes away. We train you how to do lymph massage and how to move it without lymph massage. So the lymph needs to start moving. So we have all these, we have all of this, is, is, this is common. So, uh, so I would say if you have concerns and you have a lot of fears because it's confusing, if it's consistently like showing, yeah, it's probably EBV, that will give you a lot of comfort and confidence because we can tackle that. So EBV has so many manifestations. It's like a bucket full of symptoms. So then you don't want to be scared of new symptoms. Something is, you know, tingling here or here. You know, you just, it keeps going. The, the list in, 
increases just follow the ABV protocols and you're going to start turning these off all right well and then just a final comment thank you i will definitely get the book and make necessary changes which is wonderful that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah. gabriella good luck as well i hope i hope this will answer your questions would love to hear that you get better we, yeah. we both do we both do yeah yeah that's definitely awesome. same here and all right well again thanks dr kynes appreciate you pleasure doing this interview again yeah it, it was a pleasure here as well and and again looking forward to uh, part three of this in the future yes anytime part three part 10 sign me up and keep doing your wonderful work so needed yeah same, same with you too and again go out and get our book the epstein-barr virus solution